Pulling yourselves up by your bootstraps is obviously a capitalist lie. The system relies on a large pool of poor workers who are forced to work for a small amount of rich capitalists, never mind the army of the unemployed. So if everyone would pull themselves up by the bootstraps, then no one would want to work for the capitalists. But other than debunking it, we should also present the communist counter-narrative, and this is something called the Yanan spirit, meaning self-sufficiency and working with what's around you. If you don't know how to do something, you learn by putting it into practice. If you don't have what you need, then you use what you have. It's the human spirit of creativity that can solve any problem under any circumstance. Foreign languages press is imbued with the Yanan spirit. Like Mao like say, uh, learn war by making war. So here I guess we learned uh, to, to print books by printing them. That's Christoph Kistler, the founder of Foreign Languages Press, a Maoist publishing house. I sat him down for an interview to pick his brain about the politics behind running such an operation. Okay, so it's a publishing house uh, that we founded in 2016 with the idea of um, spreading uh, worldwide Marxist-Leninist uh, Maoist literature um, and uh, doing that for an affordable cost, you know, a cost that doesn't require to, you know, uh, be poor at the end of the month. Yeah. Now, while you don't necessarily need a publishing house to spread Maoist theory, I mean, you watching this video being a prime example, but when it comes to physically reading, there's really only two options physical books, and reading off a screen. And there's plenty of comrades who can't focus on reading off a screen or don't have reliable internet. This can seem like a small issue, but if you stretch that to a global scale, it's a huge obstacle. And just go ahead and try to find some physical copies of Marxist texts that aren't mainstream. They can go up to hundreds of dollars on Amazon. So Christoph and his comrades saw this vacuum and decided to fill it. It started out small, pressing a few hundred books, but as the man grew, so did the seriousness of the operation. Sooner or later, they found themselves printing regularly, and without them realizing it, were already a small publishing house. And they needed a name. So, the name was quite easy to find, yeah? Foreign Languages Press, meaning taking the name that the USSR used and the name that China used for their publishing house that was spreading worldwide uh, classics, but also new uh, theory of Marxist theory um, for an affordable cost. Yeah? This affordable cost is still one of the most important pillars FLP stands on. And we have this idea of 5 euro because it's kind of a symbolic price in the Netherlands. It's more or less the, the price of uh, a pint of beer in a bar. We were like, okay, so like we are poor, but we we still can go uh, to drink a pint of beer in a bar from time to time. So that cost five euro. So our books should also cost five euro. Like that, everybody can buy it. So spreading Maoism for an affordable cost would be the quickest way to summarize FLP. But there's one last key we're missing. Uh, many of the books that we release have been already released before, for example, in India or in the Philippines, but um, they haven't been, you know, uh, they haven't been accessible uh, elsewhere. Uh, as for example, the works of Joma, it's very hard today to get them in the US, for example, or in France, you know, even. Or, or you know, again, the works of Charu Majumdar from India, you, you cannot get them uh, in Europe. Those are some sound and solid principles that FLP is based on, spreading Maoism for an affordable cost from an internationalist perspective. But starting a printing press with zero knowledge can be a daunting experience. Setting up our own institutions that are run for the people and by the people is key in moving the revolutionary struggle forward. At the same time, it means facing challenges that other well-funded and well-resourced capitalist institutions don't face. But instead of this being a deterrent, it's an opportunity for us to show our creative capacity. But then like to reach the stage where we are right now, uh, where our book really look professionally done, you know, um, that took five years. Uh, in the beginning, we had, I had no idea what I was doing in the beginning, you know. I had to learn everything from scratch. I don't have, I was not trained in that. Um, none of the comrades, the, the comrade working uh, here with us, um, is not also trained in, in doing copy, copy editing and doing layout or anything like that. We just, we just every day learn uh, a bit more. Every day we realize how much, you know, like uh, we have still to learn. Uh, after a, a few months, when we are about to reprint it, then we realize that we learned since the previous printing. So we, we again rework a little bit the book. 
Um, so it's a continuous, you know, uh, process. This trend of continuous learning runs parallel to the constant development of Maoism. As a matter of fact, calling the publishing house Foreign Languages Press is more than a wink at a past legacy. It's a historical statement. The first FLP was founded in the Soviet Union in 1931. Their aim was to spread Marxism-Leninism and Soviet history in foreign languages. As you can imagine, there was a lot of new revolutionary theory that came out of the Soviet Union because this was the first time the working class was able to put so many new ideas into practice. It was, after all, through the Soviet experience that Marxism-Leninism was synthesized. This couldn't have happened without the actual seizure of state power. The next challenge, of course, is spreading those ideas far and wide. And that's where FLP in Moscow came in. It all the time was the idea of spreading the ideas um, that could help revolutionary mo movement uh, in other places in the world, thanks to the achievement that those comrades uh, reached. The second FLP was established in China in 1949, right after the victory of the Civil War. The political principles of this publishing house develop with the same pace as the revolution itself. During the new democratic stage, it mainly spread Chinese culture and presented to the world a new and unified country. But as the revolution progressed and new ideas were put into practice that went beyond the Soviet experience, new information was synthesized. During the Chinese Revolution, this stage of revolutionary theory was Marxism-Leninism MZT, Mao Zedong thought. And this is exactly what FLP in Beijing eventually aimed to spread. This, of course, had a major impact on revolutionaries worldwide. Just to name one example, the Black Panthers were able to buy shotguns through their sales of the Little Red Book, which was widely made available by FLP. But now that global revolutionary theory has reached the stage of Marxism-Leninism-Maoism, things are a little different. You see, the Soviet and Chinese FLP were established after the seizure of state power, and the most advanced Maoist people wars being waged at the moment are in the Philippines and India. The development of MLM is actually advancing very, very quickly. Uh, and that's because we have those huge laboratories that are the people's part today, uh, where um, the new ideas and theories about Marxism can be tested and we can have a quick answer to see if like, things work or don't work. Even though they are putting the new synthesized stage of Maoism into practice in their base areas, they aren't in full control of state power yet. And as they are engaged in full-scale war, setting up an institutions like FLP might not be of their biggest concern right now. Well, as to say that uh, us, without having an access to uh, to the founds of a state, you know, the same way that uh, FLP Moscow or FLP Beijing had, um, let's try to do the same, you know, and. Um, it's normal that like the comrades in the Philippines or the comrades in India are not doing that at the moment in Turkey or elsewhere, you know. It's just that they are waging a revolutionary movement, yeah, so they are quite busy, yeah. Um, and uh, us being here in imperialist countries, in France or before in Netherlands, we have maybe this like advantage of being able to um, to be this like bridge, you know, between the other revolutionary movement, between comrades in, in Europe, in the US too. To maybe like being a bridge between the Indian comrades, and their theory, the Filipino one, with uh, our comrades here. Yeah, I really believe that uh, as soon as possible, let's hope uh, after the you know the comrades seize power in, in the Philippines, they would be one in Manila or elsewhere. You know, it doesn't have to be the capital. Um, and uh, yeah, in in the meantime, we're doing our best to you know to give uh, accessibility to to those to, to this theory that that's developed in. Uh, in the Philippines or in India, elsewhere, um, because even if you're right, um, the process of like the synthesis or the the, um, the clarification or, uh, around the ideology of uh, Maoism, you know, it's not yet that clear for everybody. You know, so um, we believe at least that the commerce in India and the Philippines um, can help towards this clarification, and that can. It's not only a matter of theory, it's a matter also of practice, you know. This theory can be of, of can really help here with the current challenges that we have, you know. Being a bridge between the ongoing revolutionary movements and the rest of the world is a big responsibility to fill. And there's so much theory out there and only so much you can print. And since FLP is a Maoist publishing house, it should come as no surprise that their selection process is guided by the mass line. 
we are uh, following, we are discussing a lot with people who are ordering from us. We have many, many people ordering from us. We are trying to discuss with as much as possible and asking all the time the question like, hey, in your practice, what's the problem? Like, uh, what? You... And there are, there are thematics that come back, you know? That's the first step of the mass line getting input from people on the ground and selecting the most advanced ideas. Of course, if all comrades would be asking for Michelle Obama's book, then that's probably not the most advanced idea out there. So then you keep looking until there are some advanced ideas you can filter out. An example of this would be comrades who are asking for more information on struggles around healthcare because of COVID. Yeah, absolutely. We are we are looking what what uh, what our reader are are uh are worried about. Uh, we are discussing that with uh, with the readers. We are discussing that with ourselves, with the, the, the FLP collective, uh, the Red Spark collective, and uh, we try to to advance, to propose something that can help the comrades to, to resolve the problem. That's step two. The FLP collective is explicitly Maoist and composed of comrades from different countries and backgrounds. They filter all that mass input about what problems to focus on through their knowledge of the ongoing revolutionary movements and their knowledge of Maoism. Um, in, in various countries, I mean, I'm just thinking, for example, about the book of Siraj, you know, Postmodernism Today. This book is perfect. This is really a good book to study that everybody here in, in various countries should study because uh, this is a problem we have right now. And it's a problem that the comrades in India already fixed, you know, like um, there is still postmodernism, but they already um, they already have like uh, advanced theoretical uh, solution to that. After filtering advanced and workable ideas through a Maoist framework, and of course what is practical and doable for FLP, it's then time for the third step the release of a new book. That's why, for example, we published a book on, uh, recently on uh, the new outlook on health. Actually, that was already last year. Uh, the question, the new outlook on health was typically a kind of, kind of, a, of, um, of book that, uh, that, was, uh, that proposed a solution to one uh, contradiction that many, many comrades were telling us, hey, we don't know what to do about like the, the health uh, question, what to do about it. Um, how to, to start to practice around that, etc. etc. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's like that, uh, mostly with the recent colorful classics. Of course, it doesn't end after the release of the book. You start the cycle again by asking for new ideas and getting feedback on your last project. We see hints of that starting from the first FLP in Moscow who famously put the following in their books. Progress publishers will be glad to have your opinion of this book, its translation and design, and any suggestions you may have for future publications. Please send all your comments to 21 Zubovsky Boulevard, Moscow, USSR. All organizations develop through line struggle. Nothing is static and development always goes on the basis of unity, struggle, unity. Struggle is a good thing, it should be welcomed. To give some more context, it's helpful to take a closer look at the changes FLP in China went through. When it was first established in 1949, it defined itself as a trade organization. The state even went so far as saying that it couldn't conduct non-commercial work. But in the 1950s and 60s, there was a growing and sharpening contradiction between its business activities and its propaganda function, mirroring the sharpening class struggle ongoing in the country. A turning point came in 1959, during the Great Leap Forward, when FLP was included in the newly established Foreign Affairs Committee of the China Cultural Council. After that point, it slowly started to focus more on spreading the teachings of the Chinese Revolution. In 1962, it changed its principle from non-commercial work to playing a coordinating role in international revolutionary movements. <laughs> that sounds better already! And then during the Cultural Revolution, this mission changed into the principle that distribution should accelerate world revolution. <laughs> That's more up to my speed. None of this of course happened out of the blue or easily. This occurred through line struggle, which was connected to the struggle between the bourgeois headquarters and the party and the proletarian headquarters. But all this bore fruit. The Beijing FLP eventually went as far as establishing 738 agencies in 91 countries. The current Maoist FLP has grown through line struggle as well. I believe that uh, one of the struggle uh, internally that we had was over the question of what do we want to publish, you know. Um, while at the beginning the idea was more of like let's publish um, stuff that uh, people will be interested in or maybe stuff that, you know, are not so accessible. 
to people. Uh, we more and more uh, reached this stage in which we started to talk more about uh, this published stuff that will be good for people and good for their struggle, you know. And um, uh, that's why, you know, for example, we don't publish anymore like uh, Carlos Mar Marighella, Mini Manual of uh, Urban Guerrilla. It's an interesting book, uh, but we don't believe that this is the, you know, this is the, the current struggle is for people is to figure out how they should, you know, form guerrilla unis in, in the cities, you know. That's, we, we are not there. Um, before, we used to have a very passive position in which we were like just republishing stuff that were already accessible somewhere. At a certain point of time, we were like, okay, now we have to actually, we are, we are not anymore at the stage in which we can um, publish old stuff to, to help comrades to, in their work now, but we also have to produce stuff for them, you know. That's the moment when we, we reach to some authors such as, as uh, Pao Yichin, uh, Joshua Mufat Paul, or others, and said to them, look, there are those questions. There is a question about uh, Chinese imperialism, and there are this, 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 and that question that's still not resolved, you know, or doesn't have like a, a synthesized uh, answer to it. Um, and uh, right now with Ajit, you know, that's another, uh, that's another uh, comrade who, who believe in our project and wanted to work with us on that. As they grew in their capacity, so did their political responsibilities. Just like how the FLP in Beijing at first spread theoretical knowledge from a passive standpoint, but soon started to actively make theoretical interventions. Again, nothing is static and there's much more FLP would like to achieve. Yeah, another stage in which we, we want to we want to reach later on would be to to also not limitate ourselves to English, you know. Uh, I don't believe anymore that, uh, the, I mean, I never believed in that, English is not my language, um, that uh, that everybody should learn English, not, I believe everybody should, should know well their their language, their own, you know, their language of their heart, as you say. Yeah. Um, and uh, we want to make accessible those books to, to people in their own language. Uh, so that's maybe the, the next uh, big development that we will have. Big shout out to Christoph Kistler for sitting down for an interview and all FLP comrades who helped make Maoist theory accessible on a global scale. If this has got you all hyped up and you're wondering how you can help out this awesome Maoist publishing house, we got you! Uh, I think the best way would be to simply read, study, maybe even form study circles to learn from the books we publish. Uh, you can also help us getting known. Uh, we don't spend any money on things like um, marketing, so really the only way for people to know more on, uh, on our work is to you know, through word of mouth. Um, our publishing house is run by volunteers, so we are constantly looking for people to join our team. Uh, there is plenty of work to do, so if like, you have um, skills in language, art, IT, or if you just have time and want to help, uh, yeah, please contact us. Um, finally, we have a Patreon, and uh, you can also donate through PayPal. Uh, that helps us to finance some bigger project we have. Uh, so, for example, we are working on uh, uh, translating uh, different unreleased writing of Mao to, uh, to English and that's kind of uh, stuff that requires a lot of cash because we have to access those documents at first so yeah if you want to help us on that uh, that's also a way you can contribute thank you so much for watching please support Space Babies by donating to our Patreon or streaming my music on all streaming platforms under the name Space Baby. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love this one on the mass line. Peace, love, and solidarity. Space baby out.